have co-defensive coordinator Shadon Brown and defensive secondary coach. Questions for Coach Brown, Greg? So, Shadon, start with the secondary. It used to be just corners, and so you're taking safeties too. So, how big a deal is that for you? Uh, you know, just, just explain the thought process behind combining all that. Yeah, well, um, <clears throat> in the past, I've I've been primarily working with the corners on a in a practice individual setting. Um, but if you look at my career, where I've been, I've, I've coached the entire secondary at multiple stops um, at the Power Five level. Um, I love having uh, one voice in the room. Um, when I took this job, uh, there was already a safeties coach in place. Um, and, the, and the best uh, for our staff was myself to coach corners because I've coached corners and safeties. Uh, and so when we had a staff change, I felt like it was best to have one voice in there and so me going back and coaching the entire secondary is probably a little bit more in my comfort zone than the opposite. So it's going well right now, um, and, I, and I, like, I like how it flows. You, you going to Coach Brown and saying, hey, I think this will work better? Did he ask you? How did that like, come about? Uh, I think it was a mutual decision. Uh, the head coach makes all the decisions, and he came to me and asked me uh, did I, how did I feel about it. And, um, I was all for it because, again, that's what I had done at other stops. Uh, when I was at Colorado, the last time I did it, um, I had the whole secondary. And, uh, you know, and when I was there, five of, the, five of the nine guys that I coached in two years are still playing the National Football League. So uh, we we'd had a good run of doing it there. And I think it just takes some – what it takes is it takes some pre-planning. you got to do a really good job of pre-planning. And I utilize my GAs and my student assistants really well. Uh, and those guys have been with us for now two years, so they know exactly what I want and what I expect. And so it's been pretty, pretty smooth, and I'm, and I'm excited about how we're operating moving forward. Just help with communication. What's the biggest benefit of that? Not that Dante did anything wrong, but what helps to have just one voice? Well, one voice, it, it, you know, everybody in here can say the same thing, but say it differently. You're not going to say the words exactly like the next guy sitting to the left or the right of you. So now there's one voice. There's one, there's one way of, of speaking it. There's one way of teaching it. And so I feel like now as a whole secondary, when there's a question or an issue, they're coming straight to the source. Uh, as opposed to in the past, I was involved and had my hands in everything. But from a day-to-day -day management standpoint in on-field coaching, the safeties coach was handling those guys, all right? And so now, whether it's a safety corner or nickel or spear, the, the, for, the information is funneled in, from one place. So you've got a lot of new pieces in that entire group. A few guys back, but a lot of new ones. Give us a look at the new ones and what you're seeing out of them. Yeah, uh, well, we'll start outside. Um, we got we brought in a couple transfer uh, corners. Um, the first guy, Aiden Garns, uh, transferred from Duquesne University right up the road. We actually played against him, um, watched him on film when he decided to go into the portal. Uh, really watched a lot of the film against us, and he did a really good job. He's he's really fast. Uh, he's not as big as as. He, we wanted uh, early on, but he's put on about 15 pounds since he's been here. He's really fast. He's coachable. He's a tough kid. He's a Philly kid, um, so he's got an edge to him. So he's been a he's been a present surprise as well as, you know, kind of a <clears throat> I would say a steal of the portal is Garnett Hollis, who's a six one and a half to six two. Um, that's that's what pro guys look like. Um, 6'2", 205, and he can really run step for step. Um, you know, E.J. Horton is a 4'3 is a guy at, out, at receiver, and he's step for step with him on any go ball. So he can really run. Um, and, I, and I think, you know, the sky's the limit for him. We're doing some things differently than he did at his previous stop at Northwestern. But he's a guy that's really made a, a huge jump. And then uh, T.J. Crandall, uh, T.J. Crandall, uh, transfer corner from Colorado State. Um, he's really a young guy. You gotta, most of the time when you bring in a transfer, you think that young man's a junior or senior. Well, he's still a freshman. He played one year. He was at Colorado State one semester. So he's a second semester freshman as we speak. So he's doing a good job of learning what we're doing. 
but he's elite fast as well, and he's got great length. And that's what we wanted when we went in the portal. We tried to add guys that could, could really run and guys that had some length. And uh, I think we, we hit on that uh, at the corner spot. And then <clears throat> at the safety spot, we brought in, uh, obviously brought in Jaheim Joseph, another. He was a backup safety at Northwestern, was a starter in their last four or five games. We identified him when he went in the portal. Uh, and we really, you know, it seems like all oh, they recruited two DBs from Northwestern. We really recruited those guys independently. Uh, one went in before the other. So Jaheim went in uh, before Garnett. And so we just, we recruited them independently and, and we were lucky to get both of them. And Jaheim's playing uh, deep safety for us right now. And he's a guy that has position flex to play uh, spear or cat safety. But today, right now, through this part of spring, we hadn't worked him down yet, but we'll do that the last half of the spring. Even though you did recruit them independently and they're both independently deserving of coming here, what kind of advantage is it that they are coming together, that they at least have a friend already entering the facility? And it's a little different than being the Lone Ranger, kind of like Beanie was last year and yeah. then obviously had a great year. But they have a partner. Yeah, well, the benefit is they live together. So they got, they got an apartment together. Uh, when they came, they, they, their families knew each other. Uh, so they were able to kind of navigate Morgantown together. So that was that was really good. You know, when you come in from a new place, uh, Garnett is actually from Nashville, has a ton of family right up the road in Akron. Uh, so he's he's been in the area before. And so with both of those guys coming together, it was kind of an easy transition because uh, when all of our guys went out on spring break, those guys came and were here all for an entire spring break, starting working out and training with uh, Coach uh, Mike and his staff when all of our guys were laying on the beach. Them guys were here trying to learn the schemes and uh, spending time in the weight room getting acclimated. Don, in my season, there was a lot made of maybe interceptions that didn't come about, could have been caught. What was being done, I guess, to, to rectify that? What could be done in the spring? Yeah, so we, you know, all winter, we've worked really hard with, um, you know, catching balls and charting and doing competitions and just trying to get our hands uh, on more balls and catching the football and, and more so than just catching the football, catching the football correctly. Um, and when I say that, I say, you know, if you don't, whether you're receiver, DB, it doesn't matter. When you catch the football, if you don't get your hands together and take your head and your eyes to your hands, which is where the ball's going to be, um, you're not going to be a great, uh, you're not going to be great at, at catching the football. And so we've done that uh, a ton all all season. We've charted it. You know, we've had some guys that have caught 2,000 balls throughout the winter. And when I say throughout the winter, I'm talking about starting in January when we first got back. Uh, we started there. And then <clears throat> we work on catching jugs every day. And then what we've got uh, a policy in place with the guys now that if you drop a pick uh, with two hands, that you get two hands on in, in practice, you got to get 25 jugs after practice. And so we're trying to do that to give guys an opportunity to catch the ball more. Um, and some guys are improving. Some guys are not where they need to be. But that is an emphasis. You know, I tease Beanie. He's been here today. Uh, you know, he would have been the Thorpe Award winner. Uh, I'm pretty sure if he would have caught uh, about five more that he that he uh, knocked down. So. Other corners for you besides the new guys that are here. So spells, one of the Jacksons. Just just go through which <coughs> corner situation looks like. Yeah. So. Uh, <clears throat> so Jacoby Spells uh, is is doing a good job. He he's been nicked up a little bit, so you probably didn't see him out there today. But he's been nicked up a little bit, but he's he's going to be fine. Um, and then uh, <clears throat> you look at Montre Miller. Montre Miller's come back. Um, he appealed and got a medical red shirt. You know he was hurt there in the Penn State game last year and didn't play the rest of the season. So we got that year back. So he's going to be a, a guy that's in the mix. Um, he's a guy that's that's. You know, he had, he's had some good plays. You know, the big thing for him is <clears throat> being, being a competitive guy all the time, and he's doing a much better job of that. And I think when anytime you transfer, the hardest thing is you're in a new environment and you got to reestablish yourself, not from just being a player, but, but, you know, in the mix of how we do things and, and being a, trying to be an alpha when you were the alpha at the place you came from. And so uh, he's doing a, a much better job of that. And then the guy that's probably made the biggest jump has been Jordan Jackson. Jordan Jackson's made a, a tremendous jump. He's a lot stronger. He's gained about 15 pounds this winter. He's in the, he's in the mid 180s, which is good for him. And he's fast and he's gotten stronger. You can just see that in his body. 
Uh, but the big thing that he's done a better job of is he's gained confidence. Uh, and he's gained that confidence through, through, I think, getting stronger and having more knowledge about what we're doing, which, which gives him confidence to play fast. So I'm pleased with him. Is he a, is he a finished product? By in no means, he's, he's not there yet. But being a redshirt freshman, he'll have a chance to help us this fall uh, at one of those two corner spots. We were talking with Nick Cabral last week. You explained us a little bit about you know the uh, the way the you know his positions have changed a little bit since he came on board. Is there any change? Does that affect the back end? Any does the cap play a little bit differently, or your guys in the back end still kind of the same? No, it, it doesn't change us at all. Schematically, we are who we are. Um, we're we're going we're going to be the same. Uh, it doesn't change at all. We we try we're trying to get our Spurs in the rush a little bit more. Uh, you know, we got we brought in Ty French, Tyron Bradley's a a big powerful guy. You know, if we can get those guys rushing the passer a little bit more, is what we've tried to do this spring. Uh, to give those guys a chance to to go to go rush the quarterback, obviously, so they're in a little bit less coverage. Uh, this this spring, but that doesn't mean we're changing what we're doing. We're just giving those guys, you know, some at bats. You know, you walk you walk up there in baseball, you get at bats. They're getting at bats by rushing the passer. So you're still trying to be as interchangeable as possible between free and cat, and maybe even spur or spear as spear, you mentioned yeah. some. Yeah, yeah. So those guys are are really all working together, and we'll we'll have some guys that can't go back and play. But like today, Aubrey Burks played 50% of the snaps at uh, cat safety today. All right, and he's played 50% of the snaps today at Spear, All right? So I can move him around at any time, and I'm doing that to give him both reps at both spots, but we're doing the same with some other guys. Aiden Garns can go play nickel, which he did some today. Uh, so we're, we're mixing and matching those guys, and, and the, the main thing is, is obviously to enhance their skill set, but the second piece is, is it adds to our depth, and then it allows us to see as coaches what guys are best at. And then we can put the pieces in the best fit for them to be successful, which is a win for the kid and a win for, for West Virginia. What do you ask Anthony Wilson to improve upon? Anthony's got to improve on as a cover guy. You know, Anthony's a, a, a good tackler. Uh, he was one of our top three or four tacklers last season, and he did a good job. And we, and we, we did things to fit his skill set. His skill set was coming downhill, fitting the box, playing behind the linebacker, and we did that a lot, and he was successful doing that. When he struggled last year, he struggled in pass coverage. So what we've harped on and tried to work on with him is just body positioning and understanding leverages and doing a better job of teaching him the pass concepts. Uh, and that's some of the things that he was not asked to do prior to coming to us, and so he wasn't good at that. And so this offseason coverage has been his focal point. We know he can fit the box. We know he'll go put his, uh, put his shoulder pads on a ball carry. But if he's going to take the next step for us and where we need to be, he's got to be able to go cover uh, the number two in the slot. And he's done a better job of that, you know, in one-on-ones. One-on-ones is kind of an offensive drill because it's, it's all that open space. There's no pass rush. The quarterback can pat the ball for five minutes if he wants, right? But he's done a better job of just body positioning um, and being able to break top down on routes is which what he what he didn't do last uh, last fall. Other safeties uh, above and beyond the ones you've mentioned, you know, uh, Tagaloa, uh, Nelson, uh, Josiah Jackson. Anybody else in there? You yeah. So <clears throat> I'll hit on on all those guys. You know, Josiah Jackson's a guy that's also made a jump. Uh, he's gotten a lot stronger this offseason. He's, he's able to control his body a lot better, which has really been a benefit for him because the weakness that he had was just lower body strength. And so in space, he struggled to change direction, and at the point of contact, he was always getting knocked back. And that's just lower body strength, and he's done a good job of, of adding weight. He's in the mid-180s as well, um, and he's done a really good job of, of – learning cap safety, which is where he's at right now. And he's made some nice plays coming downhill, um, you know, and he'll continue to get better at that, uh, at, at cat, because obviously he was a corner that we moved to safety, so he'd never done that before. And it's a little different seeing the field from inside out as opposed to outside in. So he, he's making a lot of progress. And then talk about um, Aiden Nelson. Aiden Nelson's a guy that, uh, 
you know, he, he doubled up duty and, and went and helped our basketball team out. And I think that was that was great for him. And and I'm sure he helped them in, on their on their ready teams and things of that nature. But he didn't miss a workout. And when he got back to Morgantown at 4 a.m., uh, even when we didn't think he would be here at a 6 a.m. workout or a 7 a.m. lift, whatever it may be, he was here every time. So that tells you where his commitment level is, and he's made a big jump as well. Um, you know, some things are still really fast for him because, again, he was a guy that was an offensive player in high school. And so being able to handle a bunch of moving parts has been kind of his biggest thing, but he's made progress. But athletically, he can, he can do it. Um, and then <clears throat> some, of those, some of those young guys that have come in, uh, Israel Boyce, um, freshman that, that early enrolled, as well as Zay Jennings, you know, freshman that early enrolled. You know, it's going really fast for them right now. But from a physicality standpoint, those two guys uh, are not afraid of contact and they're, and they're strong at the point of attack. Like Zay Jennings may have the best, the best uh, strike and get off of blocks that we have in the defensive secondary. Uh, and so I think those two guys are going to be guys that can immediately help us on special teams, which is you know where you where you need uh, where you need to steal some reps from some of those old guys that that are going to play a ton. You know those young guys got to come on. I thought last year that's where we lacked a little bit down the stretch. We didn't have as many young players that could man those special teams units that we had to play some starters there. And you know those reps really add up as you go throughout a season. Tom, what is the difference in the mentality? Of the safeties as compared to the cornerbacks? Well, at safety, you're the quarterback of the defense. You got to make communications to both sides. You're telling the linebacker, the outside linebacker, inside linebacker, and the corner to your side of the field what to do on each particular call. So you have to have a quarterback mentality. Um, at corner, the difference is you listen for the call and then you execute the call. The hardest part about playing corner is you got to play the ball more at corner with your back to the basket, right? And I get into basketball terms, right? We're in a Final Four, and you always say, man, he can play with his back to the basket. Well, when you play corner, the ball is being thrown behind you a lot, and so you got to play the ball from behind you. That's the hard part, right? It, it looks easy when you write about it, but I promise it ain't easy, okay? And at safety, you play the ball more in front of you. Everything's more top down. So that's the difference from a, from a structural standpoint and coverage standpoint. And then run game wise, as a safety, you got to do a lot more fits in the box, almost like a linebacker. Uh, at corner, your, your fit on the run game is really, really wide and it has to go through a lot of layers to get to you. But at safety, you know, you're in that fit. Um, a lot more, and balls are getting spilled to you, so you got to know your run fit, you got to know your pass fit. But oh, by the way, I got to tell everybody else what they're doing. So you got to be really smart uh, to handle that. And that's where young guys really struggle, it's because the volume of, of things you need to know. And you know, the big thing that I talk about with them is if you have knowledge, you'll have confidence, which will allow you to play fast. Well, if you're, if you're playing slow, it's kind of paralysis by analysis, especially at safety. Um, I think a young player can probably play faster at corner than they can at safety just because of the mental part of it. Does that answer your question? Yeah. What role, if any, uh, has Beanie played in some of these new guys coming in and some of these transfers? <laughs> he played a big role. Um, a huge role. It's pretty. It's an easy sell when you can say, "Hey, this guy came in for six months and we made him a consensus All-American." I mean, the the proof is there. It's not it's not coach speak when you can show that. And uh, and Beanie Beanie's done a good job. You know, Beanie helps recruit some of these guys. He'll get on the phone with guys. Um, you know, I use him. Though, and, and a lot of transfers, they, a lot of people don't know this, but in the transfer world, they reach out to guys on the, on the team or that have played there and get information. Even when we don't know as coaches or you media people are fishing for information, they're fishing too. And they call, you know, like Benny will hit me up and be like, hey, such and such uh, messaged me on, you know, social media. Are you messing with this guy? And, you know, I'm like, yeah, tell him, tell him the truth. And so he's helped us a ton in recruiting, and he's a great ambassador. And y'all probably seen him walking around. He's here right now. He's back in town uh, prior to the draft. Does he ever even take it one step above that and kind of tip you off and be like, hey, you should look at this guy? The, 
No, no, he doesn't, he doesn't do that. I, you know, we got a process. You know, we've got our personnel department, and when a guy goes into the portal, um, like everybody else in America, they, they pre-screen, and then they come to me and say, hey, there's a guy you need to watch. I watch him. If we identify him as a guy that we like, then we go all hands on deck and go full speed to go get that guy and try to get him on campus. And, and as you guys know, with the portal, uh, it goes really fast. Um, you know, it's kind of like speed dating. You got to get to know them real quick. You got to like them or, you know, you, you got to love them and marry them or you, or you got to go to next. And, uh, you know, I always tease Coach Brown about this, but he wears me out because he says no more than he says yes. And he does that because of our culture. And our culture is really strong because we've, we've trimmed some fat and we don't bring in guys that, are, that have been cancers at other places, no matter their talent. And if a guy's not a fit for us, Coach Brown, sometimes he makes me mad. I've known him for a long time. And he's like, nope. And I'm, and I'm so mad because I know the player's good, but he's looking at from a 30,000-foot view of what is that guy with his character and his whatever he's bringing to us, what's that going to do to our locker room? And if it ain't going to enhance the locker room, he ain't going to take that guy. And, and that's why our program is so much better now um, and, you know, kudos to him and what Coach Brown's done and trying to build, build the program when everybody wanted to run us out of here. He was still trying to build the culture of the, of the locker room. And, man, our locker room is strong, right? Those guys like each other down there. They hang out with each other. Our culture and the character in our locker room is really good, and that's why when you get down at Baylor, uh, whatever we were down, and we go back and come back and win the game, that's because our locker room's right. Right. When, we have it, when you have adversity, when you have poor locker rooms, when you have adversity, people point fingers and they fight. Or they don't come together. When you have a strong culture, strong locker room, they pull together and can pull out close games, right? You guys have been in sports for a long time. You see teams that always win close games. Well, they probably got a great culture. And so that's where we've taken the next step. And uh, we've done that with transfers as well. So. You have to add more luxury or necessity guy this summer in your secondary? Yeah, well, uh, it'll, be, uh, it'll be a luxury guy. If there's, some, if there's something out there that is, you know, that is an elite player that can enhance uh, our football team, uh, I'm always in the business of enhancing our team because it's about wins and losses. And so if it can enhance our team and it's the right type of person and character and, and player, then, then, then we'll go with them if we need one. Okay, thanks, Coach. Yep.